AMD just gave us our first hints about next generation console performance. Let's take a look and see what they announced. What's up everybody, Brad here, back again. And this week is uh, Computex being held and it's where hardware vendors show off their next generation stuff, what's coming down the pipeline. And AMD made pretty significant announcements. And honestly, I could probably do an entire video about why I'm really excited about what Team Red is doing. But I think it's important to kind of dial it back and begin to understand that this is starting to show us the performance that we're going to see in the next generation uh, Anaconda, Lockhart, and honestly, the next generation PlayStation consoles as well. They announced the Ryzen 3 series of chips, and they also started talking about the Navi graphics or in the form of the RX 5700. So let's just take a look here at what they actually announced. So we've got the Ryzen in 36, uh, 3600X, 3700X, 38, 3900, and all that good stuff. And AMD, I, I gotta give it these guys some credit. They are coming with some cores and some threads for some really delicious price points that I think is gonna give Intel a serious run for their money. So Team Red is coming out firing here, and all this stuff becomes available um, this summer. Um, we'll learn more information about the, on the GPU side in June, and more from uh, well, the chips will be released uh, on 7.7 uh, later this year for the 7 nanometer, and then July 7th on the 7th. But anyways, so starting it for 199 bucks, and there's even chips that are a little bit cheaper than this, but I want to kind of talk more about their performance side here. For 199 bucks, you're getting six cores, 12 threads, uh, 249 bucks, 612, again, but a little bit higher clock speed. And then once you hit 329, you're going to get eight cores and 16 threads for 329 bucks, which guys, that is a fabulous price point, especially when you compare things to what Intel is offering. And if you go all the way up before uh, they start probably get into the Threadripper category, which they haven't announced yet, the Ryzen 9 3900 x 500 bucks gets you 12 threads and or 12 cores and 24 threads for 500 bucks which is yes 500 dollars is a lot of money but that's going to be a pretty kick-ass machine now granted we got to take all the rest of this information i'm going to talk about here with the grain of salt because it's coming from amd which means it's marketing material and obviously they're not going to talk about how bad their stuff is when compared to the competition but if you look at the performance here and you compare it to some of intel's highest end stuff like their 9700k the 3700x and three single thread performance performance is a 1% improvement. Now, that's you're going to be saying, well, that's probably not going to see a whole lot and all that stuff. Guys, go check out the price points when you look at spec out a 9700K versus a 3700X. Then come back and watch this video. Same thing on the 9900K and the 3800X. Again, basically the same performance. I know it's 1%, but we're just going to put margin of error and all that good stuff. But again, the price points are going to be delicious and make it very easy for people to get this type of real-world performance without you know, really stretching their budget too much. And then on the multi-threaded performance side, uh, the 3700X just, honestly, that pretty much destroys the 9700K. There's no real question there. And then the 9900K versus the 3800X, about the same. So the thing to keep in mind here is that Intel typically previously won always the single core performance thread category, and that's why their multi-core, multi-thread CPUs typically perform better, and here's AMD coming out saying, hey, look, all of our stuff is now on part. Now, granted, this is all sort of current generation stuff. Intel announced new stuff, so we, we in fairness, would need to compare it to that, but we can also probably make the argument that their current stuff, like the 9900K and the 9700K, those aren't slouches either, right? Those are pretty serious performance uh, processors, and the fact that AMD is competing with them at a pretty good price point gives me a lot of hype. I mean, I'm not, I don't want to say I'm a raw AMD fanboy, but at the same time, I also like saving money when I build rigs. And I think AMD is going to be an absolute serious competitor this time around. Uh, they started to become a real serious threader with their uh, last generation stuff. But I think now we're starting to kind of cross that threshold where it's like, it, it's almost illogical to buy anything other than the stuff unless unless Intel comes down on their price points anyways here you go you can see a little bit more performance and it's again just showing off how well and and the thermals which are going to be a big deal for next generation consoles are are performing with um, well with the AMD because you can see the increased performance the lower wattage and all that good stuff you guys can go read about that on a hundred different places on the web but what I want to point out here is a couple things one this is the beginning of of the reveal of the specs for the next generation consoles from both Microsoft and Sony, because we already know that they are gonna be using an AMD Zen 2 chipset 
So their performance characteristics can be derived from this information. Now, if I had to hedge my bets here, I bet that we are going to see something, a, a processor that's somewhere probably between a 3600X and a 3700X. Because um, you got to remember, these are general compute units. When you put something into a console, yes, I know it's going to be general compute, but it's a very specialized device, right? A console, while it is has a lot of PC characteristics, they're building it for games and they don't need everything and all the overhead. And plus, they got to keep the price down. But we've already know that Sony has announced that they're going to use an 8-core processor. So it's likely that it could be 8-core 16 threads. Granted, these could be custom chips as well, where they could do something like eight cores, eight threads, uh, although that doesn't seem to make a whole lot of sense anymore given the way processors are built and sold these days, but I bet it's gonna be somewhere around there. And it likely makes sense that Microsoft is going to be falling into that bucket somewhere around that as well. And you can kind of get, look again at the performance characteristics that AMD is building in the 250 to $329 price point. You're getting 3.8 gigahertz, somewhere around there, uh, boost clocking up to 4.4. So it is, it, these are not slouches when it comes to CPU. Now the TDP, the thermals, um, or the power, I should say 95 and 65 watts is actually a pretty big deal because you don't want to jam a whole bunch of wattage in there because wattage typically turns into heat and heat is not good and we all know how heats work, heat works in a console. So uh, it, it's going to be real interesting to see which kind of class that they run it. Do they run a Ryzen 7 or do they run a Ryzen 5 a little overclocked um, trying to get extra performance? But we're going to be watching these things very carefully and you can start to understand when you look at the benchmarks for these chips. Again, as the information comes out, keep in mind that this is where the next generation consoles are going to be. The other thing I want to point out too is that the Navi, uh, Navi, they started talking a little bit, just a, a little bit about their GPU performance. Um, so we get the Navi 7 nanometer, which is being pitched right now as the RX 5700 and AMD is saying 1.25 performance per clock versus GCM, which is their previous generation or graphics core next uh, inf architecture, I should say, for their graphics card, and then 1.5 X performance per watt. What this boils down to is big efficiency gains, for less power in, more output of performance. That is big because again, that's going to help keep the thermals down, which means that they can crank the performance up and tweak it just a little bit more to get a little bit more performance out of it. They're saying it's roughly GTX 27 performance, but again, take this with a grain of salt. So uh, the other big thing too, is they're saying the RDX 5700 will have GDDR6 memory support. I think that's a given that the next generation consoles will likely support that as well, considering AMD is making the core components. Why would they downgrade to GDDR5 or anything crazy like that? The other big thing that was announced that I think, I think this gives a little bit information about what Sony announced. If you look at what they said, they said it's going to have native support for PCI Express 4.0. What this enables is, um, in simple terms, is a lot of data can now stream, honestly, twice as much as PCI Express 3.0. So you're going to get higher performance or bandwidth, if you will, between the GPU and the CPU and all that good stuff. And also, and also the storage, they're saying it's two gigabytes per second, or uh, yeah, two gigabytes per second, which is two times faster than PCIe, which was one gigabyte per second. Now granted, we don't quite know what Sony has done on the actual storage side, but this will begin to explain some of their special sauce, if you will, about how they're getting such good performance on the storage side. Remember that was such a big deal for them? Well, it very might well just be explained by PCI Express 4.0 being natively supported by Zen 2, which we already know is gonna power this processor, which is already part of the Navi, which is beginning to explain the core components that are gonna be in these consoles. The thing to keep in mind though, guys, the thing to keep in mind is that these consoles are more than a year away. Right? It's not like they're shipping in, in November of 2019, it's next year. So while this stuff is extremely cutting edge right now, it's not even available, um, it will be a little bit older when it does ship. That being said, remember that these are specialized products. Consoles are custom built for one thing and one thing only. They're not your video editing rig and all that good stuff where they gotta have general performance and all that stuff. And what this means is that they're going to have a lot of time to tweak it and all that good stuff. But the thing you need to take away from this is going from a Jaguar core, which is what is used in the current Xbox, to Zen 2 and Navi is going to be a significant performance bump. Significant. Next week, I'm going to do a little E3 um, deep dive, what I expect to see, what I think is coming and, and all that good stuff. Uh, but this has just been a little bit of insight from Team Red about what is going to be included potentially in the next generation consoles. I'll catch you guys right back here next time.